Hi guys, thanks for joining us. It's Jess and Teal, we're back. <laughs> We've been gathering information through life for content. <laughs> Basically. And, yeah, we're doing a lot of uh, market research. Research, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> if, I remember last week I was like, Jess, if I have to go on a bunch more hinge dates just for more research for us, <laughs> I will take that. I will, I will take one for the team and I will do that. <laughs> I forgot that you said that. And I think I said I have enough research that I don't need more data. Yeah. That's what I think. But apparently, apparently God seems to have other plans. So that's fine. Um, but yeah, so today we are going to talk about something that I think when we have an awareness of this, it really does help us to create shifts in our lives that then create tangible shifts in our reality. So talking about breaking the cycles. So you may or may not relate to this, but I'd love to know if you guys are watching or if you're watching the replay or whatever, like, is there a cycle that you find yourself in that keeps perpetuating? And maybe you've been doing some work around it. Maybe you've had some, some progress. Maybe you've had some shifts, but then you find yourself back in the same cycle. And it's maybe it seems like the same and it's not, it's shifted a little bit, but it's still the same theme. If you can relate to that, I'd love to hear maybe what the cycle is, what you're experiencing. I know that's been one of the biggest challenges for me in my life. And also I did, I was in this training today with my mentor, Ama, and she brought up something that is really, really important. And I really needed the reminder. So I thought, oh, perfect timing. And we can share it on our podcast. But the fact that when we experience these cycles over and over again, we can actually avoid taking responsibility for what we could do differently because we're so distracted by it being evidence for the old narrative. Oh yeah. I When you texted me that, <laughs> I related so much because it wasn't until I started really redoing my step work this year for like the 12 step, 12 step work that I recognized the narratives and the beliefs and the stories that I was perpetuating over and over again. And mm -hmm. then like actually living out in every one of my relationships, whether it was with a romantic partner or a friend or family members, it was like, I had these beliefs that like, I won't be chosen, that I need to do a lot to be lovable, to have worth, mm -hmm. um, that, I'm like inherently unwanted. Like these are pretty serious and like kind of sad beliefs. And I don't think I'm alone in this because you and I have talked about it, but I realized that every partner that I was drawn to ended up reinforcing that belief. And now I understand that like intuitive draw, right? Like we're just like, oh my gosh, I just can't understand why I'm so drawn to this person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it would end the way that would like reinforce the story. And I'm like, oh, there it is. There it is again. I'm going toward what I know. And I want mm -hmm. this to be true somehow, even though I don't want it to be true. Like, I'm used to it being true. So when you said that, I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm working on. Like that's literally yeah. the work, you know? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that is. That is the work. And I want to do my best to kind of share as we always try to do this, but I really want to share as, openly and authentically as possible here because yeah this is something i mean we all have a blueprint that we that was imprinted upon us in our early years from zero to seven and it's basically our relational blueprint and our beliefs that we've decided about the world right that were imprinted on our subconscious and so that's where some of these beliefs can really serve us and some of them really do not right? Like the belief that I'll never be chosen or the belief that I'll always be abandoned or the belief that love is painful. Like all of these things can then create us to go out in the world and project that belief out. And then as within, so without. So we're going to find evidence and we're going to subconsciously recreate the situations by either the people that we're drawn to or the situations that we choose, right? And it is the work. And I love that you brought up the, the step work because honestly, that is 
that process, I, I really believe everyone should work through the 12 steps in some way, mm -hmm. in some program, because it really illuminates things that we, I didn't otherwise see for myself, despite, you know, years of therapy, coaching, training. So it was really, really helpful. But these stories that these narratives that just become kind of the themes of our lives. And once you become aware of it, <laughs> then it's like, for me, sometimes it's, it can be even, it's good to be aware of it because when you're not, it's just perpetuating itself and you have no power, right? But then you're aware of it and then it may still be perpetuating and then it can almost feel more painful because it's like, oh, great. I know what I'm doing. I Like for me, I see that I'm drawn to this energy, right? And, and I'm not really drawn to this other energy. And I was talking about this today because I was just reflecting back on the last couple years of me dating and I was like there was a there was literally a moment at this party where there were two guys one was blueprints the old energy that I would be magnetized right the other one was a different energy and I consciously in that moment was like no Jess we are not going this direction we are going to go in this direction right and I did that and I had things come up for me within that relationship where I had to notice then when my avoidance would come up, I had to work that out within myself to be available for that relationship. But guess what happened? <laughs> this person over here that I consciously chose was still a different flavor of unavailable. And so at this point, I'm, I'm just like throwing my hands up, you know, I'm like, okay, I surrender, you know, again, like I surrender, I don't know, I, I'm not, you know, the director of this play here, <laughs> I don't, and there's so much learning and so much growth and it's amazing, but moments like that for me have really brought me to my knees, you know? Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I <know. laughs> oh yes, I definitely do. And I, I love that you call it a different flavor because that's exactly what it is. Flavor. Because the thing is, is, these beliefs are deep seated and they are so wired in that it doesn't always go away like overnight. Like we have the awareness, right? Like I remember the night, I remember the night clearly of when I recognized that my belief was feeling unwanted. Mm -hmm. It was like a very painful night. I remembered it like really the, like the full awareness came up. I'm like, this is the wound. Like, this is the deep wound. And then I remember immediately after going, well, how the hell do I get rid of that? Like, <laughs> it, because like, like immediately I'm on the phone with Joe and I'm like, what do I do now? What do I do now? <laughs> because it's not an easy fix. It's not just like a, well, just feel wanted, right? It's, it's not, it's not that simple because it's grooved in, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's like, it's been deeply grooved in and because unconsciously we've been reinforcing the narrative by going towards certain people the more we've done that the more it's grooved in so now it's mm -hmm. kind of like we have to repair the groove first and then choose a new one and so I feel like first the awareness and then we're choosing different people helping to repair it but it's still not completely there and it takes mm -hmm. some time and I really relate because I've done the same thing like since that I like look at who I've dated or who I've gone for who I'm interested in and who I'm drawn to, to, those are actually two different things I've recognized. Who I'm drawn to, no, really, who I'm drawn to and who I'm interested in, two very different things. Because there are people that when I'm in a certain state um, that maybe I subconsciously want to reinforce that narrative because it's like an old version of me that's kind of taken charge, I will go towards someone, like be drawn mm -hmm. to them, even I'll be like, no, I'm not into him, it's totally fine. But like, okay, then why are you talking to him? Why are you hanging out with him all the time? why are you cuddling with him? Why are you doing this stuff? Right. And it's like, but I'm not into him. And it's like, yeah, but you're drawn to him Teal, for a reason. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's going to be guys that I'm like genuinely interested in, but I'm like, Oh, like what? Ooh. Like, I don't know if I'm like physically attracted to them or I don't know if I could have sex with them or if I could do this or I go on a date, but it's like, I'm genuinely interested because they're healthy people. They're like mm -hmm. healthy relationships, but I'm not quite there yet because that <laughs> groove still isn't healed. Yeah. But the exciting thing is, is like I'm watching it get closer and closer, and I'm I'm watching how there's more and more surrender. Um, 
like I think you watched me go through this on Saturday. I had like a mini breakdown or a Sunday, Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. But like a month or so ago, I remember crying to Joe and I was like, if God wanted me to feel wanted and loved, then why do I keep re-experiencing feeling unwanted, unloved, right? I was like, where are the examples? Like, show me, right? My brain was like, show me how I'm wanted, loved, and enough. And then it dawned on me on Sunday, oh, I keep asking for external things to show me. And then that's gonna like continue this loop of like me going toward these people that give me these mini hits, these little breadcrumbs, and then leave because that's what I'm looking for. And I'm like, oh, I have to learn how to like heal that and feel it in myself before I can get, but then I'll be attracted to that stuff. So that's what I've been working on now. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. how can I feel, how can I heal this wound and feel wanted? How can I want myself truly? Mm -hmm. Cognitively, I may say I do, but like, are my actions really showing that? You know, or what I tell myself all day long. So I've been like really cognitive these past few days. Like, how do I talk to myself? What am I saying? Really it's good. Reinforcing that belief. Yes. Yeah. And it's, you know, there's so much that we could say on this. And that's, I always run into that struggle on our podcast because there's so much to speak to with each of these things. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'll, I'll say, you know, yes, I witness you. And I feel like that is a sign of a lot of growth when you notice, okay, these are the, this is what I'd be drawn to, or this is what I'm drawn to, but this is who I'd want to date, right? Because the thing is, is like we actually are the ones who create the narrative. We create the prison that we're living in and we also have the keys to it, right? And again, that's the work, right? And it's it's not so simple, like you said, of just, oh, well, okay, let me just unlock it. Here we go. Because it's protection patterns that we have created to feel safe in the world, right? So there's all different ones, but I know attachment styles are, are, are big, you know, hot topic nowadays. And attachment styles aren't fixed and you can shift around as we've talked about before. But just a simple example would be like somebody who is, who leans more anxious, they regulate by coming closer to someone and, and someone who's avoidant regulates by taking space. Both really desire connection. Both are really afraid of intimacy. So it's a similar kind of wounding that's presenting in different ways, right? And so what we need to do is actually get really clear on, okay, what is it that we desire? And then when we set that intention, when we ask, when we pray, right? It's not like a genie in a bottle that we and then poof, here it is right it's like then all the the divine orchestration will operate to make us into the embodiment of what we seek the energetic match of what we seek and so if we desire which i know both of us do like these these beautiful deep loving conscious partnerships we need to become the person who's a match to that and to be really real with you like I'm there. <laughs> like, I realize that I am there. I would date the energetic match of me. So I, yeah, I feel that. No, I'm the I, same way. Yeah. So I'm, I'm there. And there's a difference between our wounds driving our actions and our, our vision, right? And what I realized for myself is like, oh, in this most recent experience that I had, it's like, shit some of this sort of like needs to be um, discerned, right? Because part of it is like my higher self operating and experiencing and enjoying and surrendering. And part of it is my wound that really just deeply desires connection. And I'm kind of tired of sitting in the void and just being like, okay, you know, like, and I'm kind of, I feel like I've been patient and I feel, you know, I'm just, I get frustrated and, Part of it sometimes is is my wound like wanting connection and closeness and whatever and and that's okay um but just being aware of that right like last night i felt like really lonely and the night can be harder for me because during the day i'm doing stuff i have like people to talk to and then i'm a bit of a night owl so i'll be awake and like my phone kind of quiets down and then i'm just with myself and and it it just starts to feel kind of lonely and you know I have I have a lot of trauma from nighttime too so 
just that's when things come up for me a lot. And last night I just realized like, wow, if this was years ago and I was feeling how I'm feeling right now, I would for sure reach out to whichever person is there in my life for sure and do whatever I could to anesthetize that pain that I was feeling. But last night I just felt it, you know, I was just like, okay, this is grief. This is pain. This is not, it's a little bit related to the current situation, but it's more old stuff. And it's tapping into this deep well of grief that we all have that many of us, myself included, would rather not be with a lot of the time. So we'll go over here, we'll go over there, we'll go to this person, we'll drink this alcohol, we'll use this drug, we'll eat, we'll be busy, 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 we won't slow down because something in us knows that if we did slow down, we might have to feel some of this. And I really felt it yesterday. And then I woke up today and I, I kind of rode the whole impulse and I was like, oh, okay. And then That's I woke great. up to... <laughs> this is like the work, man. It's not fun. Um, <laughs> but then I woke up today and I just felt really sad, like genuine sadness. And I was like, okay, you know, this is what it is. Like, I am also really ready for a new experience. And my desire for myself has to be, or I choose for it to be more important and like sacred, basically, like the sacredness of it is that I will ride through that wave rather than go back to the old pattern of reaching out, if that makes sense. Yes, that is it. I, I'm with you. This is why we're still friends <laughs> we're on this journey yeah. because it just, it's the exact same thing. I have been celibate now for nine months in County. Um, and if I go this month, too, it'll be the longest I've ever been celibate. And that's because I have a promise I made to myself. Mm. And, that, and, cause, and that's exactly it, where it's like, do you know how many times yeah, I would love to, like, just go hook up with a guy or, like, go do something? Because, like, I'm a very affectionate person. Physical touch is my main love language, you know? Mm. And it's like, I've really done anything with anyone, like, mainly made out with someone on, like, a vacation. You know? Like, that's it. And the, the whole nine months. Um, but it's because the last person that I did, I did. it was very, very connected. And even though it wasn't a healthy connection, like a healthy like relationship, it didn't go anywhere. Um, I still recognized what really connected intimacy felt like. And I was like, yeah, I like that. And I only want that from now on. Mm -hmm. And then I made a promise to myself. I was like the next person that I do this with, I want it to really mean something. Like I want it to really be connected because mm -hmm. that's a different pattern for me. Right. Like not that I was ever like super promiscuous or whatever, but it was just I didn't have the same connection with it because I was so blocked off and I preferred to not connect with someone in that way. Mm -hmm. So I was very like you talked about like avoidance or leaning avoidant versus anxious. I do both, but I tend to lean back more, especially when it comes to involving both emotional and physical intimacy. I want one or the other. I do not want both. It is way too intense. <laughs> So once I allowed myself to go into that and have both, then I was like, okay, this is what this is like. This is really scary. It's really intense. Mm -hmm. But I've created a new window of tolerance, and this is yes. what I want from now on. And so it has been really hard. Like it, there's been so many nights where you know I'm crying or I feel that deep loneliness or the grief that you said. But I'm realizing the same thing that you're saying is that there's so much that's been in there, you know, since childhood that we haven't grieved that we've continued to bypass for so long and it wants to come up it wants to come out you know so that we can move through it because you know people talk about like there is no fixing there's just loving and accepting and allowing you know like healing um sorry feeling is healing like things like that and they're really true because i did the similar thing this morning where like i was just like deeply moved by certain things and was just crying and it was a lot of grief and sadness around children. And I know it was because, and you pointed this out to me recently, where I do this thing where I'll grieve myself by grieving for other people. So because it's too painful for me to like think about me and do it for me, I'll like relate to somebody else and then like empathetically tie it to them when really it's, I want to do it for me. And I noticed that this morning, it's like, I'm grieving around children and around things happening with children. 
Mm-hmm. And I want to protect them. I want to save them, right? And I'm, I'm crying because mm-hmm. I can't help them. I can't save them. But when I really think about what I'm really sad about, it's not being able to protect and save my younger self. And I'm really grieving for younger me. And, right? But it's, I, I try, I don't want to go there, you know? Yeah. And, so I, and that's exa- it's exactly what you're saying is I don't want to go there. But because I don't go there, these stories perpetuate. Yeah, it continues. So it's in the being willing to go there, going into the grief, mm-hmm. that we can release some of these beliefs because we're loving it. We're mm-hmm. loving our grief. We're not hiding from it anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we're not saying it's bad. A thousand percent, and it creates a little bit of space. But mm-hmm. when we're when we're able to do that, right? Because even if, let, like, let's say this is what's happening, right? And I I love that you put that together. By the way, like such good awareness. Um, but okay so let's say like looking at the suffering of the children in the world right now is what allows you to access your grief great like because it it opens it up to create space for it to to be felt to be held to be released if it needs to be so amazing right and life will keep because it's very generous giving us these opportunities to tap in tap in tap in tap in and one of the greatest opportunities we can have for that is through romantic relationship because that is one of the places where you're the very closest to somebody you know physically emotionally all the ways mentally spiritually and so when there isn't sorry i want to backtrack for one second so the the willingness to feel the grief the pain right like people might say why (laughs) why would i want to do that why my dad said that to me the other day he's like oh so this is like And that's supposed to be a good thing. (laughs) And what I was sharing with him and what I have to remind myself of is like to live in this world with an open heart, you need to be willing to feel all of it and feeling the grief, the pain, the sadness, the absolute ache is like proportionate to the capacity, your capacity to feel the love and the bliss and the peace and the ecstasy, right? It is. And so to me that I'm like, okay, as much as this hurts, like, and I have, you know, kicked and screamed about how much it hurts. Like I still want to live with an open heart and I want to, and I will walk through this. And even like, I know I shared a little bit about this, but I sat with ayahuasca a few weeks ago and one of the women there that was the guardian, I was releasing and releasing and releasing like so much grief and pain and crying and like, I was like, it's too much, it's too much. And she said, you know, you can say it's enough. Like you can, it's enough, you know? And then I stopped and I was like, no, I'll do it. I will do it, but I need my ancestors and I need support. Like I cannot, I will happily process this, but I need support, right? So we can't, we can't do this alone and we're not meant to. And that's why I thank God for you, Teal, and like other amazing loving people I have in my life to hold this with me and for me and and we do it for each other right but um yeah it's 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 a big ask especially because most humans have relational trauma like most of us do and we're wounded in relationship and we actually have this profound opportunity to heal in relationship it's so beautiful and that's something that I find so hard because I'm like, but there's an opportunity. (laughs) Can't you see it? Don't you get that? Like, this is actually the vehicle, this moment of, of scare, being scared or uncomfortable or whatever vulnerable. But, you know, because most of us were not taught even any of this stuff, I mean, we feel uncomfortable, our survival patterns kick in and we want to do the survival thing, whatever that is disconnect or reach or avoid or get in a big fight you know all of these things and oh my god i had to do like ninja level with this a couple days ago because the person i really really wanted to talk to right i could tell that subconsciously the way he was engaging was to probably he's not even aware of this but to make me so like mad and frustrated that then i react that then it creates a rupture, that then it's easy to make distance, right? And I could see all this and I was like, I wanted to react so bad. I wanted to just react. 
because it had been ongoing for like a few weeks and I was just like at the end of my window, but I guess I wasn't because I didn't react. I, I reached out, I processed, I reached out to you, I reached out to some other people. And then I was able to just dial it in, you know? And that's the gift of doing this work is the freedom. It's not necessarily that we get, you know, the thing or the partner or whatever, but it's like when we show up differently, the energetics of it then come in, right? And I know Teal, you were sending me some, or you were talking to, about this meditation that you've been doing that is having you get into the state of the things that you're desiring, right? And I was like pushing back. because so I was like, I get it in theory, but like how the fuck are you supposed to do that when you have so many things going on, it's really hard, it's so challenging, blah, 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 right? And I was listening to this podcast right before, before this and it's a lot of the teaching of the Kabbalah, which I'm just starting to study and I find it really helpful. It's not, it's not a religion, it's just like, universal law universal teachings that can that can intensify like any spiritual understanding that you already have or religious practice that you already have but he was saying like just saying like i'm certain that the universe is working in my favor even if you don't believe it even just saying that sends out a frequency and just repeating it you know so i was like okay i can do that i can do that well, the reason what helped me because I, you know, I really, I'm like, but I don't believe it. What, but I'm someone that needs to look at like the science behind things. So I always need to know how it works. So basically how it was explained to me was we have like what 50,000 thoughts a day. And they're like, if you keep replacing like every other thought with the other one like with so like if i was my thoughts are all these other things that are distracting me or i'm like oh look this always happens or this always happens and i replace it with this always works out for me mm -hmm. or i have everything like i want for nothing or i'm really grateful like i i'm full of love you know i have love i see love everywhere i look right you start replacing so what i so what i realized is not only is it counterbalancing and then puts it in the other direction. Yeah. You're not only getting rid of the, the thought that was putting you somewhere an old toward an old narrative, you're now going in a different direction. And mm -hmm. that's when I was like, oh, okay, I can get down with this now because this is more powerful. Because it, it, when you're doing that replacement, and this is we're replacing the story, right? So it's like, okay, people might be listening to me like, okay, I get it guys. Like I relate or I don't relate. Really, how do you break the cycle? And it's like, this is it. So not only do you stop the old story, you replace it with the one that you want. Mm -hmm. And before you, and then what happens is these thoughts and things that you're saying, hopefully if you're willing and willingness is a big thing because yes. when I fight it, I don't do it. When I'm willing to do it, I do it. You'll change your actions that, that will then reinforce that belief. And then that helps put it on a little more. So I, the first affirmation I ever did when I gained a little bit of willingness, when I had a little bit of surrender when I was first getting sober was everything works out for me. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that started to help where it's like, maybe I missed the train, but then something else worked out. Mm -hmm. And then the second one that I did out here, which is probably silly, but honestly it works was I have the best parking luck. And you know, I say this one and I <laughs> constantly say it. And every time that I go out, I reinforce it. And no matter what the parking situation is, I say, like, I trust that this was the best spot for mm -hmm. me right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I just read, like, I trust that this is, and you know what? So many times, almost every single time there's a meter, there's time on it. It's hilarious. I yeah. laugh, every time. but I will purposely go and like put time on it. So I'll go put extra for the next person. And then I'll tell myself like, oh, I'm doing this and then it will come back to me. And mm -hmm. it's, and then I believe it even more. So like, I just keep solidifying that belief, solidifying that belief, solidifying that belief. So I keep seeing it more. And so now I'm like, okay, I could do this with little things like parking. I need to do this in my relationships more because mm -hmm. you and I have talked about this. I think maybe in our healing with a higher power episode about like, I needed to make my God big enough for relationships because I was always like, cool God, you got me everywhere, but not this area. I got this. Thanks. Right? And like, how has that worked out for me? Like, yeah, yeah. I love it. Like, but, but so for this, it's like, okay, 
why is it that I'll use affirmations and these different things, journaling, all this like meditation and stuff, but for other things in my life, you need to use it more and be more willing. And that's what's changed for me is other times I would say it half heartedly. This time I'm willing to believe that it works. And that's been like a big mental shift of like, okay, what if I just believe it works? Like, what if that other ways of the other ways of fighting it hasn't worked? For me. So, like, let's try. Let's try believing that I'm wanted and loved. Let's see where this goes. Let's try believing that I have everything and see how this goes. And it's it's helped make me a little more excited for it. And it's given me a sense of calm so far. Um, doing this new type of meditation. And just tapping in and, and I find myself wanting less. I find myself, because one of the things I've been saying, the affirmation I've been really doing is I want for nothing, I have everything. Mm. And now it's even, I find myself like, Jess, you would have proud of me. You know, I've been like struggling with certain like financial things and getting things in order. I feel more confident with that. Like, I don't, again, we never know what these things are going to affect. But I don't find it coincidental that I start doing this and then now I'm finding confidence or I'm finding willingness to do other things that I've been avoiding. Right. So good. So good. Yes. And I love piggybacking off of what you said, like, let's try another way. Because, you know, when we feel that like struggle or pain or resistance, it's because we're actually out of alignment with all that is right? That's the indicator that we're not actually aligned with our essence and the true version of ourselves. It's like these lies, these lies, these beliefs that are in our, in our minds. We all have them, right? The monkey mind. Um, and, but little tiny shifts can have things recalibrate and time is not linear. So things can happen instantaneously from like, imagine like if you desire something, like I had this thought, like, if you desire something so much, like let's say you desire a relationship, you've been doing all this work, you've been showing up, you've been walking through the fire, you've been using, you know, you've been learning the lessons. It could just be the tiniest little, and then it just all comes into place, right? So what about adopting, like what you're saying, that belief of like, it, it could happen in any moment. Like I'll say that to my clients. I'll be like, you could literally go to the grocery store later today and connect with the person that you're going to build a life with like that could happen and so what if we move like that in the world right and i know i was saying to you teal like teal and i are going to go to this event this weekend and i was like i am going to move like that at that event and we will tell you guys how it goes <laughs> and just curious to see like it obviously there's space being made in my life right now why because nature I always mess up this word. Nature abhors a vacuum. Abhors. Abhors. <laughs> abhors a vacuum. But a little Canadian. Oh. <laughs> when there's <laughs> when there's space created, something is coming into the space, right? And so let's see. Let's see. And um, also, too, we're not meant. Our job is the energy of it and doing what we can and meeting each moment and doing the best we can, right? And we're gonna have moments of forgetting and remembering and forgetting and remembering and that's just being a human, right? We're gonna have deaths and rebirths all the time. Exactly, and I think what happens too is another great thing about relationships and is that it's constantly a gauge for where we're at. Yeah. So. Yeah. Every time we are, we're continuing to do this work. Like, I don't know about you, but I'll be like, oh, I feel great. Like I'm, I'm living life. I feel fully confident. I love me. I'm doing all these things to upbuild myself. And it's like, someone will come in mm -hmm. and it's basically like, okay, let's test that theory. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's, see. Uh -huh. let's see. Because like you're talking about the, like the universe of core is a vacuum. It also, that works with healing as well. Yeah. And so like healing can occur in a vacuum. We need that little like variable for us to like test it against, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's where the awareness, you know, and not thinking and we will be humbled every time. Right. It's always when I'm like, I got this. Right. It's yeah. Crazy. Humbling. But also to that is it's not even necessarily that it's supposed to be like a lesson it's more so how I like to view it is it's revealing a deeper layer of whatever the wound is. Yeah. Because 
it's like, oh, we might think the wound looks like X, but then we learn to realize like, oh, this is a shapeshifter. And, <laughs> and then actually, it actually also looks like Y. How did that happen? Because it's showing us yeah. the true nature of the wound. And so it's, it's not that it's like, oh, I thought that I'd been there and I haven't healed. It's like, no, it's just giving you more information. Mm -hmm. It's more feedback. Mm -hmm. more information because it's a deeper layer and it's interesting because you know just to kind of bring tie that back to when we were talking about feeling the feelings right and why this is important why it is a key factor in unlocking this and changing the narrative is um, joe and i were talking about the layers and he was saying when i was like upset and was saying i'm in all this deep grief and i'm having all this why am i having this now like i don't understand and he's like well, think about it teal you've peeled back the layers you've taken away the old tools you he's like you took away drugs you took away alcohol you took away food you took away alcohol, eating disorder you took away x and this and that and then ended up right all the things i was using overworking he's like so what's left the grief yeah the, grief, the yeah. trauma the wound yeah so so that's kind of what happens is like we just keep pulling back the layers mm -hmm. and then our relationships are like a good test or a good gauge of like, okay, how far have we pulled back the layer? How mm -hmm. deep have we gone? And, and so it's been helpful. Like what helped, like, even though it's painful in the moment, every time I'm finding my way out of the pain from the relationship dynamics, I try to remind myself, like, thank you for this feedback. Like this was really helpful feedback. That's what this is. And we're, we're going to use this to like, to help ourselves and to heal more because we love ourselves. And like, how can we use this? How can we use this? And it's hard. Like, I don't want to always do work, but um, that's where the emotion comes in is it's allowing us to be. Mm -hmm. to, like, it's not necessarily to go do something. Sometimes us doing nothing and just letting the things come up is the thing, right? Is doing the thing. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, the reason why that's big for me is I grew up not being able to express my feelings, not being allowed to, having to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. So changing the narrative involves me expressing my emotions when they come up. Like Sunday is a perfect example. Like, so basically what happened on Sunday, guys, was like I had this big kind of like epiphany type thing at church. I felt great. I was on kind of a high. This always happens to me. Every time I have a big realization, I'm like, I think I'm good. The <laughs> grief comes up because the grief is the layer, layer, new layer pulled back. Grief is coming up now. And I called you because, and I didn't, because I was like texting you and I'm like, Hey, I do not feel well. I feel really overwhelmed. I was at a birthday party and like, I was getting all this like sensation and all this stuff's coming up. And I'm like, I don't even know what this is. And, they, and you like called me and I called you and I just cried. And I just remember saying to you on the phone of like, I don't even know why I'm crying. right now. And you were like, it's okay. I'll just let it come. And sometimes that's, and it was, and I realized now, like looking back at the situation that being able to feel my feelings in the moment when they came was the kind of healing that I needed because for so long, whenever I was emotional, I had to like learn to push it down. Mm -hmm. Like we'll feel this later when it's convenient for everybody else. Like, <laughs> Yeah, because that was the narrative. It's like you can't feel your feelings in front of other people. You can't express when you're overwhelmed. You can't do the X, Y, and Z. So in order for me to change the narrative, I had to do something different. Mm -hmm. and, and I have people like you that allow me to do something different. Mm -hmm. Now that that action took place, I now can reinforce the new belief. Yeah, so that's kind right. of how this work, where it's like the thought has yeah. to come up, the counter action has to take place. And then that's going to start to reinforce the new belief. And then it's like mm -hmm. lather, rinse, repeat. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. I'm glad you brought that up. It's like, we don't, we don't have to know. We don't have to intellectualize. Oh, this is this. And this is why I'm crying. It's like, your body is so brilliant. It knows. It holds things. Not even from, you know, from our family lineage that's passed in in our DNA, you know, like when I was sitting with the ayahuasca, I'm telling you, I cried for like generations and generations. I literally just was grieving, you know, and I don't know what all of it is, but I felt it. And it's like, can we just like slow down? And when these waves come up, like we don't need to go digging, right? Like when people sometimes have a consult with me, they're like nervous because they're like, oh my gosh, what will this look like? Like, what does this healing journey look like? And, and what I say is like, life is 
orchestrating all of it. We don't go in with a shovel and start digging up things that aren't ready to come up. Life is your teacher and whatever your prayers are and intentions are, it's going to orchestrate to show you, right? And so if it orchestrates a moment, like it did for you Sunday, how do we meet that moment and create like that safe, loving container for you to have as much expression as you can and let a little bit of the lid off the pot, a little bit of it out, right? And then, okay, now I, I feel better. Like, and I relate to the suppressed emotions thing because as emotional as I am, I still notice like, oh my God, sometimes it's just in there. And I like, I still have challenges, you know, crying just on my own. Like I, I have needed, hopefully this will shift at some point, but like a safe person with me there that creates that space for me to then cry, you know? Yeah, no, it's helpful. And that's why I practice within my friendships and then whatever romantic relationships I have, you know, um, that's the, the point. Again, we can't do this in a vacuum. So we need other people mm -hmm. to connect with because that's naturally what we want to do. We naturally do want to help each other regulate, help each other get through this stuff. We are, you know, part of the system where we feel like we're actually empathetic and, and we don't want to have to do it all alone. And for people that might be hyper independent and think that they have to do it alone, having another person and allowing it, that's that counteraction. You know, that's mm -hmm. that doing it. And that's something that's hard for me. Mm -hmm. I, I am someone that thinks I should go in my room and do this alone. I shouldn't mm -hmm. call someone else up. I shouldn't tell someone else what's going on and be vulnerable. And because I made that commitment, right? Like knowing where I want to go, so because you and I have both set out what we believe is the relationship that we want and that we desire, we keep slowly becoming it, right? We've talked about this a bunch, so many episodes, it's like write out what you want and then then start to become the qualities in that person that you're looking for, right? Practice what you're looking for. So for me, I want someone who is emotionally available in like all different senses. I want someone who can be vulnerable, but then it can also be strong. Like I, I want that kind of stuff. And so I have to act that way. You know, I have to be willing to give some intimacy and not just be there for my friends, but let them be there for me. Because that's, it's like a two-way street, right? I have to, I have to change that because again, there's those wounds. But I didn't find these out until I was doing the steps and I was working steps six and seven specifically because, and we, we talked about this in a podcast before, but going through and figuring out what those protection patterns are mm -hmm. really, really gave me some deep awareness as to the things that I do. And then mm -hmm. I wrote out what it would look like if I didn't have that. Right. And then that's been the opposite action of like, okay, I'd be vulnerable with people. I'd open up and cause I want to be able to do that stuff. And I know that I'm getting reflected back. So when I'm drawn toward people that are also have a wall up and I'm like, wait, mm -hmm. but come on. Let, be, let me be there for you and like open up to me right? like, that's what I want with like a partner like oh, God, let me do all of that and they like have their wall up and it's like Teal you have to do the same like it's not a one way street mm -hmm. so it's been really a gift to practice this with people like you and Joe and other friends and family that I have because I'm learning how to do that and not crumble because my mm -hmm. belief is like if I do that I'll fall apart or people will leave and they yeah. or they won't be able to show up for me and you Sunday proved to me and my parents to prove to me that like, that's actually not true at all. And like, mm -hmm. you guys are. And, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's helping to reinforce that or to change that, that belief and reinforce the new one. So that's where being willing to take that, that counter, like the, the counter action that do the contraindication, like it's really, really powerful. And it does take that willingness and some vulnerability mm -hmm. to, to do it and, and hope and pray, you know, that you'll be carried through and that it will give you the kind of like relief you're looking for. For sure. And there will be wobble, right? So we're not just going to go, Oh, counteraction. Sweet. Got it. Right. It's like, no, because everything in you is going to want to do the old thing to, you know, whether it's to like find evidence for the story or, to prove yourself and it, a lot of it's subconscious so it can be kind of confusing because we could say oh well no i want this but your protection is overriding what you actually really desire and walking through some of the fire allowing it to burn away these places that are no longer serving us right that's the alchemy of it 
And so this will have to, will happen as many times as it needs to, right? Because life is just really teaching us. It's going to give us as many examples as we need. But what I found this most recent experience was like, oh, wow, like my story, my narrative of like, oh, people always leave. Like I, you know, I'm too much. And like, it's, you know, no matter what, or I choose people that are da, 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 right. Like I realize I have enough space from that narrative. It really wants to still be true, but like, it's not though. Because I looked at it from a wider perspective of like, what are all the things that are happening with me, with this other person? Like, this is not that. But I could easily use it as evidence for that. But it really is not that, you know? Oh, 1000%. And so like, what we believe will be shown. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people say like, oh, I'll see it. I'll like, uh, believe it when I see it. And it's the opposite. I'll see it when I believe it. And so because, and this, again, this is all like proven stuff. It's like psychology that when you're focused on one thing in your brain, you're going to look for that. So if your belief is like certain people are, you know, dangerous, you know, you're going to be looking at each of those people and think like danger, danger, danger. You become mm -hmm. filter on. Mm -hmm. And so what we're learning and the way to change narrative is being willing to put a new filter on. Or being willing to take the old filter off at least and just kind of see and maybe shift it and that's why that replacing is so important you know when we're taking old habits old thoughts old beliefs and then we're replacing them with new ones yeah that's yeah. how we make those major shifts that's how like you know what quantum leaping also it's like yeah that's how you do that is because you adopt you adopt this new this new habit and it's it's nice this is where awareness is first you know awareness is always the first thing we said that thought so for example if we're even just thinking of something bodily so just like i i haven't you know i'm recovering from an eating disorder it's something i constantly struggle with it's my first program when i look at and i notice that i'm being more critical of myself or other people and i'm nitpicking my body or notice other people's then i'll start i'll let the thing now that comes in my head is wait, how are we talking to ourselves? What's going on? Or what are the habits we're not doing that we have, like that we used to help us? And I'm like, oh, I know. I'm not doing X, Y, Z. I stopped doing this. And so then when I reincorporate that new thing, um, it's changing my thoughts. It's changing my behaviors. It's changing my belief, right? And then I look in the mirror and I'm like, did we lose five pounds? Like, how did that happen? Right? Because again, it's like when I'm yeah. focused on all the things that are wrong with me, all I do is what's wrong with me. But when I take that awareness and I start to just change my thoughts and change my behaviors around it, then when I was reflected back to me, what I see in the mirror is all of those things I love about myself. So when I'm saying, I love you wrist, I love you elbows, shoulder, belly, everything. Then when I look in the mirror, I'm like, well, did, yeah, like, are those collarbones? Like what's going on, right? And it's like, we're, the day before, I didn't see that. Like, I didn't magically, lose weight overnight. I didn't magically get plastic surgery mm -hmm. or look different. It's what's going on in here. You know, this yes. we're seeing what's going on in here. And the more we understand that and then are able to kind of take accountability for our own thoughts and go, oh crap, okay. I can be empowered now to change this. Like, mm -hmm. I can and it's that willingness because there is a part of us, you know, I don't know about you, but I know for me, there's a part of me that really resists the change and doesn't want to get better, doesn't want to feel better. Of course. I love it. And I have to fight that constantly. Um and love it in a loving way. Still be like, okay, I see you, but I love you, but we're not gonna do that. Yeah, well that's where where like the self reparenting comes in or self parenting comes in. It's like, like A Course in Miracles says, <laughs> we're like babies playing with scissors. Like we think that we want this thing and we, and we want to play with these scissors that are probably going to hurt us. And so God comes in and takes the scissors away and we cry, right? Like similar to this. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, we, as, as uncomfortable as some of these beliefs and perceptions are, they're familiar and they're grooved in. It's like the default wiring in the brain, right? So this is where learning how to create enough safety within ourselves to be open to the possibility. Like just being open to the possibility is enough to start to shift things in your favor. Really? It really is. And, you know, this is like the work that I, that I love to do with clients, because if we don't, if we don't even know, 
we don't know our narrative, we don't know the stories that keep showing up, we will just keep perpetuating them on repeat, right? So like, why do this work? Because of that. <laughs> like, do you wanna have a new experience? Cause you can, right? And I mean, I could tell you like, there's countless examples, but like I lost an entire community of people, right? And I never thought that I would have anything like that again. And I have, I have a more beautiful, more loving and better community and friendships than I've ever had now. Miracle. Like, it's the same with men. It's funny because they say this is a carving year. We've talked about this. And I am having so many. I think, I swear it's because my focus is on finding my partner that I'm having so many past relationships come back. I had a guy <laughs> message me last night asking to make amends. <laughs> or he's like, I guess the night before, he's like, hey, can I make amends? And I'm almost like, what are you going to make amends for? Like, I'm like, I'm a little surprised. I'm like, okay, I'll take it. I had another random guy, I had to re-listen to the voicemail, call me, he's like, hey, I don't know if you remember me, but like we had lunch together two years ago, like when we were three years ago when you like lived in New York, and like I just saw your name in my profile, whatever, I just wanted to catch up, whatever. and I'm just like, what? Like, who are these people coming back? I had someone from college randomly come back, and like it was someone who I like always thought I would like have feelings for or whatever, you know, it was like a very like tough situation, and he was like, oh yeah, I was just in California and I actually think I'm going to be in San Diego next month. You know, maybe we can meet up. And it's just kind of funny because these are people that I thought I would always feel a certain way for. That I just was like, nope, I'm always going to be drawn to this person. It's going to happen. It's always going to happen like that. And now when I'm talking to them again, I'm just like, eh. Yeah. Like I kind of laugh at myself. Like I'm looking through my messages and this was someone who was so like, oh, we can't be together kind of thing, right? And even I'm talking even up to maybe eight or nine months ago, like a year, because we would talk mm -hmm. off and on. And I remember saying to somebody, I will never be over this person. It will never happen. I will always be attracted to this person, always be drawn to them. And now I'm talking to this person and I'm just kind of like, like I'm looking at his messages and I'm just like, I'm not jumping to answer back i'm not feeling like oh is he gonna answer yeah. me? i'm not like oh my god am i gonna see him it's literally like oh, if it happens it happens, it happens i'll be him and it's like whoa well that's weird like never expected that to happen and i really do think well actually i just know that it's because of following this guidelines mm -hmm. these guidelines following these steps and and doing it this way and and really being willing to try it a different way mm-hmm mm -hmm. Yes, totally. Oh my gosh, the past relationships coming back. Like, yeah, I mean, I there's been a few things that have come through for me re recently that I'm like, I did good there. Like, there was a guy that I had a crush on forever, and you know this story, mm -hmm. like, forever. And all of a sudden, he's expressing interest in me, but his life was like a little chaotic, and I was like, this is not a good idea. And as much, and I did open it up for a minute, and then I was like, I cannot. Like, I wouldn't be in integrity with myself or him or the whole situation. And I, I, we talked about it and closed everything before anything really opened up. And like the way things unfolded after that, I was like, thank God, thank God. And then, you know, like there's been a couple like men in my field, like throughout the years and like one came back and he acted like a jerk within the first five seconds. And I was like, see you later, dude. And then, and then last Friday, it was the like same, same blueprint, different man. Like, but I was like unavailable for this as well. Like, bye. And so yep. it's when we see like, oh, an old situation comes up and we start to show up differently, right? Then we see our progress and, and we don't do it perfectly, but this is where the taking responsibility comes in of like, okay, like we're here on this planet, we're walking through this life experience. Like, do we want to believe that we can create a shift or do we want to believe that we're going to stay stuck in the same thing? Cause either way we're using that mental energy somehow. Right. So what if we take responsibility for the parts of ourselves that are contributing to the things that we don't want, whether you're in relationship, you're dating, like that's where that's the responsibility piece. And when I work with couples, I say, we need to have agreements at the very beginning of this. And one of them is that you are responsible for your own self and the way that you show up. It's not like she does this, he does that, they do that. No, no, 
because then we're stuck in the finger pointing blame game, right? So same with us. And it's a, it can be a big ask. Like me being responsible yesterday was me doing the opposite of what I wanted to do, texting some of my girlfriends, maybe a little bit obsessively, not super bad though, compared to the past and like not doing the thing. Now it's like day two of not doing the thing. Okay, cool. What can I do instead? I ran a 12 step meeting, do this podcast, clean my house, gonna go do yoga, right? Like moment to moment to moment. And we build this muscle and we start to exist in this future version of ourselves more often. And then we become more and more of a match. So it's like, we're releasing, we're freeing ourselves, you know, a little bit at a time, sometimes big chunks, sometimes a little bit at a time back to our true essence, which is to me, like the purpose of us being here is like, and then when we're aligned with our essence, things flow more easily. It's like this paradox. No, exactly. Yes. To all that it's, you know, there's a saying, you want to build self-esteem, you have to do a single wax. And everything that you said is exactly that. Like if we want to build trust within ourselves, if we want to believe that we can change and that we can have what we want, we have to take that responsibility. We have to take the ownership and build that self-esteem by doing things differently. You know, you are now showing yourself and your brain like, hey, when this situation, if it ever happens again, I now have another option because I've done it before and I've lived it. And now I can do these other things. And that's how it becomes more and more powerful. And then, like you said, it's it's the energy. You know, you can use your energy toward this, your energy toward that. And you made that decision of, I don't want to put any more energy into this. I'm going to take that energy and I'm going to put it toward things that are actually going to be helpful for me right now because this is no longer helpful. And that's what I tell people to look at is I tell them to not look at it negative or positive. You yeah. have to look at it as like, is this helping me or is this yeah. going to harm me? Yeah, good. And that's good. harm you? Maybe don't do it, right? I'm not going to tell people what's right or wrong because, hey, maybe maybe you need to feel a little more pain. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I know I'm I'm like that. I'm a little masochistic where you gotta I gotta get kicked down. I gotta get like totally beaten down. You know? Yeah, I know you get it. But there are then times where I'm like, okay, enough pain has been felt. If I do this thing and I react this way, if I answer this person or chase or do whatever, I'm gonna have to hurt now. Mm-hmm. And so instead, even though it's really hard, I'm going to sit back and do nothing. And I'm going to go put my energy here because that's more helpful. And I asked myself, like, how can I be helpful right now? Who can I go mm-hmm. help? Yes. How can I get out of myself? How can I go be of service? Like, yeah. who can I go help? And it's it's annoying at first. It's You struggle at first. But then, like you said, I'm glad you called in the muscle. You start to exercise that muscle. And so the more and more we become willing, the more we have this action, the more we build these muscles of change mm-hmm. of, like, okay, it's easier and easier to do it. So at first, it's going to be a difficult, it, it could be difficult. I don't want to say it's going to be, everyone's different. It could be difficult. But the more you practice, that's why it's, you know, practice, not perfection. The more you practice, the easier it gets. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And if you put the focus on yourself and your own evolution, right? Because God knows I know how much we can want the other person to change or show up differently. And we can think that that is the path to us feeling better or things working out, right? But if we can bring the focus back to ourselves and our own evolution, our, you will attract what your frequency is, what your resonance is. And so it's interesting because that's, I mean, I believe that's why we're in each other's lives and stay in each other's lives. And I think certain souls are really here to do some massive, massive, like shifting and healing and evolving and certain souls maybe are not, and that's okay right but i just know that like when we put the focus on ourselves we will continue to to be more and more and more free in these circumstances that come up that can can still be challenging but we have more freedom like me years ago would have been like probably driving to the guy's house and like forcing him to talk to me you know and i was just like all right like this is uncomfortable i'm gonna be available to myself because I want someone that's available to me. And I looked in the mirror and I told myself, like, like, I love you. You're amazing. You've done so much deep work. I know this is so hard. It's really painful. And, you know, whatever I needed to hear. It's like, whatever. That's the, the practice. Yeah, because ultimately, you know, when you think about it, when we think about the reasons why we want certain things, um, 
don't know about you, but I think most people, it's like, because they want to give abundantly. They want to, you know, help out and be of service, you know, and it's difficult to do that when we're stuck worrying about these situations and worrying about these other people. So yeah, yeah when we're pulling it back and thinking like, okay, is this helping me or harming me? Because if this is harming me, I'm not being of service, right? So it's like when we're able to pull back to ourselves first to just check in, then we're able to turn it to other people and be like, cool, now I can go do that. Like you running a meeting, right? Think about that, <laughs> right? Instead of being stuck in the situation, you're then running a meeting, <clears throat> helping other people, showing up, being of service. Yeah. Way better use of your energy than worrying about someone else, right? When that, you know, some, some guy like that who's – not, and it's again, not helpful, but you got to turn it to be something helpful. And so that's the kind of stuff you could do again, that's going to build that self-esteem and then you're going to feel more positive overall. And that's, and that's the evolution. That's the kind of evolution that, you know, we're looking for because that's the stuff that actually positively impacts our deepest souls. A thousand percent. And, and I love, I just want to like highlight real quick when you said to focus on being of service like I found myself sometimes say like, well, I, of course I want to be of service. I really do. But like, I'm walking through something really hard right now. And so I have nothing to give. Right. And then I've heard like people say, that's exactly if you are able to right? like once you're maybe not in the fire of it, but like little bit, like just ask someone, how are you doing? And like really listen, right. Just to get out of your own self, because this is not a fun place to be a lot of the time in our minds, you know? But being of service, everything comes back to us. Like what we give out comes back. So what if we just accept for this moment that we're not the directors, that we don't have to know how. And the fact that we're trying to control and orchestrate is why we're feeling so tired because we're not actually meant to do that. Mm. We're just meant to meet each moment and do the best we can and show up and do our own healing and our own work so that we can then meet whatever moments in front of us and try to keep an, a really open, loving heart. So. Exactly. No, that's exactly it. Yeah. Is we have to heal ourselves so then we can help others heal. And yeah. I love that you talked about sometimes you feel like you have nothing to give. Most people when you're in that state too, like aren't looking for much, mm -hmm. you know, it's like just having someone there or like you said, a simple, how are you? That's what I suggest to sponsees. Especially mm -hmm. if like a sponsee that maybe like just relapsed, like what they they all look at themselves and be like, I just relapsed, like what do I have to give? And I'm like, a phone call, a prayer. Mm -hmm. I tell them to start with a prayer. I'm like, if you can't even talk to their human right now because that feels like too much, pray for this person. That's mm -hmm. it. It yeah. can be as simple as that. You just start small. It doesn't need to be and it, because yeah, maybe you are going through it and you're like, I just need to get out of my own head. It's like, okay write down everyone you want to pray for and just send them a little blessing. So simple, so simple. And, and those are just little ways that you get out of the pain or the, the old habit, the old story. And then you shift it to the new narrative and you learn a new habit, a new story. Um, we're just looking at the time. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. We gotta go. So much. We gotta go. It's been over an hour. Anyway, Jess, thank you so much for being really open and honest. I love having these conversations with you. I think this is a great topic. Um, hopefully everyone else did too. <laughs> yeah, thank um, you. yeah, this is going to be on YouTube. So please check it out. If you're currently watching us live, thank you so much for on. Um, and yeah, reach out to us if you have any questions, DM us if you want certain topics for us to talk about or if you just need some assistance or you need some space, you know, you need someone to hold a little bit of space. Both of us are available by DM. Um, and yeah, we hopefully you join in for next week. Yeah, thank you guys so much. And if this was helpful, please like and share. And we just wanna reach as many people as we can to help support people in walking through this, this time because it's a challenging time. So thank you so much and thank you Teal. <laughs>